when you work for yourself, mm. is keeping the structure mm -hmm. within your life, right? Business, family, having any kind of a social life, finding that cut off line of saying, okay, enough's enough, I'm gonna close the laptop. How do you manage your time? What's your tips and tricks around that? <laughs> is there anything that <laughs> kind of comes to mind or are you just? I like a bit of calendar blocking. So mm. like every day, I hate this word, my non-negotiables, I go to the gym and I walk the dog. And I always set my day up in the morning. I get up, even if I have to get up and I've had like half an hour less sleep, I get up and I journal and I like look up, right, what are my priorities for the day? Sometimes every now and again it all goes to pot. But I think yeah. when you've got like a good structure, yeah. then even if everything else is going to pot, like when we're setting up a house or mm. we run into like five different networking events in a row, then you've mm. got good habits to fall back on. So it's okay if it goes a bit to pot every now and again. I mean, mm -hmm, I have no structure. When it comes to... Structuralist. Yeah, completely. <laughs> you say that, but no, you've got the dog walk, you've got the gym. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. There are my kind of... I do that like 6.30 in the morning when everyone's asleep. Yeah. We when both it do comes both get up to, early to yeah. get it in. When That's it, another thing, get yeah. up early. Get yeah. up early. When it comes to how do I... How do I balance time between work and children? I, you can't. It's insanity. And the people that think... You can only guilt trip yourself for so long. I can sit at home and I can live on be off benefits and I can be the best mum and I could be there. But what example am I setting for my children? Mm -hmm. Zero. Mm -hmm. That it's okay to lounge about in your dressing gown all day. No, yeah. sorry. Yeah. Or do I show them that this is what you get after the effort you put in? So I said to my son once, I said, go and dig a hole in the garden. I can't remember what it was before, but... And I went out with him and we did it together. And he moaned and groaned. And I said, the thing is, understand, I will never make you do something I wouldn't do with you myself. So yes. live by the example that I'm setting you. It's, I, I don't know. It's, so I can't, I feel guilty. And I think, oh, God, I haven't spent enough time. But I'm very fortunate because, not fortunate, that's not the right word. With Izzy, he is who he is and he's going to live with me forever. But he's a part of the team, isn't he? Oh, he's always like, yeah. we bring him shopping. He helps up the houses. Yeah. He's, yeah, he just he comes said, everywhere. He, he comes to, to some of our network lunches. Like, it's great. Yeah, yeah. He said to me last night, he said, I said, I've um, prepared him. I was exhausted. So I came in and I said, oh, so good. I just want to say, mum, it's getting quite annoying you keep saying that. <laughs> <laughs> he's so funny. I'm so that's awesome. Yeah, but then he heard me on the phone to Laura talking about the, the, the job that I'm covering for at the moment. And he was in the toilet where he shouted and he went, I'm so proud of you, mum. Like, yeah, that's and cool. It's, he says everything that you have to remember your kids are probably thinking. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Whereas my older two, two may not voice it as mm -hmm, much. Mm -hmm. And I always feel like they're giving me shit. But I yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, that's but, beautiful. Support either way. Yeah. yeah. And... What would you say to people? I, I speak to a lot of people, right, that say, oh, you know, I want to get out of my job. I wish I had that. I wish I could do what that person does. Mm. I wish I was as smart as them. I wish I had their money, that car, da 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 da. And it's all that I wish. Yeah. And you say, well, you could do that. You could do this. Here's the steps that you need to start implementing. But they just don't want to start because mm -hmm. they're, it's something inside. It's like a confidence thing. They're insecure. They yeah, don't they don't believe, want it enough. They don't believe they can do it. So, there's two inspirational business women, right? Mm. That are building something significant. Yeah. <laughs> What's your advice to the to the to the to the mum, right? Potentially, um, who's sitting at home, feeling swamped, feeling overwhelmed, feeling insignificant, not knowing where to turn. Mortgages going through the roof. Cost of living grinding them down. Right. Where do you start? How Beginning. do you st how do you start that that journey? Step one. You've just got to write it all down. Step mm. one. The thing is, I've been there. That's been me. So I can, and I, and, it's, and I still, there are some odd days where I'm a bit like, oh, it's really hard. But I know I have enough skill sets. So I've always tried to educate myself with different things. If I'm not doing a class, I'm doing a course or I'm doing something. Like, you know, I, I, aesthetics industry for 24 years, dental nursing over COVID, you know, just now telecoms communication company. Like, and it's like, the more uh, because I had doubts now because Laura's yeah. intelligent she's very book smart I'm not like that so I'm not book smart whereas I'm more of a practical visual learner mm -hmm. so Laura can absorb a lot she's like my daughter's exactly the same so, I did my master's that should have taken four years but I did it in a year because I yeah. can just what whilst working full-time as well but what? yeah <laughs> like I can just do so you're like literally that. a genius 
I mean, no. <laughs> but we're I mean, still reading the pop-up picture no, books. No, but so. she, this is one of the things. You say stuff like this and you did have the doubts at first. And I was yeah. like, you don't see like the amazingness that you can create. And I think now you do see that. Yeah. Because we both see, and I think we both big each other. I mean, I still know well. shit at numbers. <laughs> But no, you can do mental arithmetic I well. Mental you just can't well. do spreadsheets because I mean, yeah. that's very funny. Oh, but that's we'll get our times table into our heads at some point. <laughs> no, no. But, but again, it's it all comes, about balance. But I don't need to. Yeah. Other, right? I've got Laura. Yeah. Exactly. Human calculus. Yeah. I've got Laura. I've got like Libby. She's yeah. quite good at maths as well. So You're fine. Is he tells me now because he's had a great you. And I think this is it. Mentorship. It's so important. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Izzy's is a prime example for this. So he's 14 years old, gone through school, and he's been a, a tick box. He's got developmental delays, genetic disorder, immune system issues, blah, 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 blah. He struggles every day of his life, mm -hmm. and it's painful to watch it. Mm. And he goes to school, and he's less than everyone there. So in his year, he's in year 10 now. He, the teacher's like, he's never going to sit his exams. He's never going to do this. He's never going to do that. And we have a group that we belong to, and there's a math tutor that arrived in that that one day and she said i'm the best math tutor in the world i can teach cool. anyone yeah and i just went teach is he i thought like, it and i kid you not he went to her for three days for half an hour 40, 40 minute lessons she came running out to me and she went your kids are genius i'm sitting in costa thinking you're insane <laughs> you absolutely have lost the plot and because he was struggled with two had three Right. He's a 14 year old boy. Right, right. It so was just his memory just would not comprehend those two numbers mm. or three digit numbers or two digits numbers or anything. Is that like a dyscalcular? Um... I think it's dyscalcular, but he has a developmental delay. So he's mm. got a genetic disorder called White Sutton syndrome. And that just means he just doesn't pick things up. Mm -hmm. Like he, whereas at football, he can, he can tell you what player mm. is what and plus things like that. So it's so really when he's interested mm. as well. He's just so focused on it. Yeah. So he's she, got that yeah. focus. So she said he's learnt. She goes, I've tried with him and nothing. She goes, but what I've realised, he's got a photographic memory. And uh, she was, so, I swear this one was jumping up and down. And she said, look, look. So each number has a pattern. So she showed me how they, they show this pattern. Mm. And she said to Izzy, right, Izzy, what's this is this? And he just went, and he wrote it down and he added it up. Wow. And next week, and the next week, when he saw her, he was doing two digit numbers, three digit numbers. But just from that, he now tells me he's a, he's got a photographic memory. He's like, yeah, well, I know because I have a photographic memory. So it's not the fact that he may suddenly now be like she said to me, he's supposed to sit his GCSEs next year. She said he will hundred percent do his GCSEs. Awesome. Whereas the school has I kind of never thought that he'd be able to. No. So it no. was about accessing the way that he needed to learn, like yeah. that part of his brain that, that was different. But it, it's given him the confidence to think, for him to say, I can. <clears throat> He's only had a few lessons with her. Because of our timings, mm. I've not been able to take him back. He's starting again on Friday. But just with those few lef lessons and someone having that belief in really? you, he's gone from going, he doesn't understand money. I can't send him to the shop. You know, he just can't do that. He can't go and... He doesn't understand what a pound is. He doesn't understand the value of anything. So I have to phone the shop and tell them that he's coming and this is what he's bringing and can you... You know, you know what you're doing right now? I'm sitting here thinking as you're explaining that, it literally sounds like Richard Branson's like childhood. Oh, really? Yeah, did you not see... So recently, though, because you know he's dyslexic, right? Richard yeah, Branson, yeah. Like he needs his secretary, does like the... the, the when they're checking to a hotel, has to do the, the reading and writing. But he's also completely like numbers... So he was in a meeting, I don't know if you saw it, he was in a meeting with his, uh, you know, the guy's got 400 odd companies now. He was in a meeting and uh, they were talking about numbers, talking about figures, and they were talking about net and gross. Mm. And Richard made a comment that, 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 that made his accountant immediately realise that Richard had no idea the difference between net and gross. So he went over to Richard and he said, Richard, can I have a word outside? They went outside and he said to him, and you can look this up on YouTube, he said, Richard, you don't know the difference between net and gross, do you? And he said, I've got no idea. And they're talking about hundreds of millions, if not mm -hmm. billions of pounds. And his accountant literally, literally took out some like pens and a paper, drew, drew the sea with like colored pens, and drew a guy with a fishing net, with a fish in it. And he said, Richard, you see the fishing net with the fish in it? He right. said, that's your net. 
And he said, everything else around it, the ocean, that's gross. Mm. And he was like... Got it. Got it. Yeah. Makes sense.